when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! Hey guys, Neil here from Neon Black Reviews. So today I'm back with another film from 2024 for you guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about Abigail. Now you guys that follow me here on the channel know that I like to keep these uh, reviews as spoiler free as possible. Uh, but unfortunately I'm not really going to be able to do that with Abigail. Uh, this film is uh, one of those films that kind of starts out one way and then kind of changes direction and becomes uh, completely something else. Uh, so there's a little bit of a surprise uh, that is revealed in this film uh, not too terribly long after it gets started. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to do a review of the film without uh, revealing what that surprise is. So if you haven't seen Abigail and you don't know what this little surprise is, uh, I would highly recommend that you would uh, pause this review and don't come back to it until you've seen the film for yourself. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be your final warning. Like I said, I am going to have to reveal uh, this film's little surprise uh, in order to do the review. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, like I said, Abigail uh, came out uh, here in 2024. In fact, it was uh, not uh, too terribly long ago that it was in theaters. And it's just now being uh, released to uh, physical media. I got my Blu-ray in um, a few days ago and sat down and watched it last night. Uh, it was directed by Matt Bettinelli Alpine, I believe is how you say that, and Tyler Gillette. And uh, it stars Melissa Barrera, uh, Dan Stevens, and Alicia Weir. Uh, and this one starts out, uh, we have a, um, well, we'll call them criminals uh, because that's what they are. Uh, we have a group of criminals uh, that kidnap this little 12-year-old girl. Uh, we see, uh, well... From the cover here and also from the opening scene uh, that she's a ballerina. But anyway, uh, they kidnap this little girl at her home uh, and take her back to this uh, abandoned mansion uh, where they are going to hold her for ransom because apparently her father uh, is a very rich and powerful man. So, uh, yeah, they're looking to, to make a quick buck uh, by kidnapping this little girl. So, yeah, criminals is what they are. Uh, but uh, it isn't too long after uh, they get uh, into the mansion uh, that they realize uh, that they uh, bit off a little bit more uh, than they can chew. Uh, because Abigail is not a uh, little 12-year-old girl. She is actually a centuries-old vampire. Uh, so that is the little surprise uh, that this film has. And, uh, and like I said, I don't know that they were really trying to keep it um, you know, like a, a complete secret as far as the marketing and everything for this film. Uh, I don't remember seeing a trailer for this film, but I mean, the tagline for it here, right here on the uh, Blu-ray is, uh, children can be such monsters. So that does kind of give you, you know, a little bit of information there as, uh, you know, something is going to be a little bit more uh, going on with Abigail uh, than uh, what she initially seems. But anyway, that is uh, the little surprise. Uh, and once this happens, um, yeah, there's a, a few more revelations uh, that come along, and I will not uh, spoil, those, spoil those for uh, anybody that hasn't seen the film. But, uh, but yeah, so it is one of those films that you know starts out one way and becomes something else. Uh, and I was as I was watching this film, um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of From Dust Till Dawn uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it does have the same basic premise, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, the film starts out with a group of criminals kind of doing their thing. Uh, and then, you know, they get down there into, into Mexico and, uh, go to this bar strip club and, uh, yeah, realize that the, the bar is full of vampires and, uh, yeah, then they have to deal with that. So this film's kind of similar to that, um, in, you know, in the sense that they kidnap this girl that turns out to be a vampire. Um, but it's also, um, it has some pretty strong comedic elements in it. Now, I wouldn't call this film a straight-up horror comedy um, because it is, uh, for the most part, a pretty serious uh, horror film, uh, but it does definitely have some more light-hearted moments in it. Uh, and I did find myself laughing with the film uh, instead of laughing at it. So that's always a good sign. Uh, so I did enjoy the comedic aspect of this film as well. Um, the other thing I did like uh, is the characters. Now... These guys are criminals. 
Uh, but once they find themselves, you know, trapped in this mansion and trapped, they are. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into um, any any more spoilers uh, as far as, you know, what goes on in the film. But uh, take my word for it if you haven't seen it. Uh, they are trapped. They cannot just, you know, open the door and walk away. They are going to have to deal with this this little girl uh, who, like I said, is a centuries old vampire. Um, but um, even, you know, despite the fact that they are criminals, um, you know, I especially like Melissa Barrera's character. And I forget what her name is in the film. Uh, and it's not actually her true name either, uh, because uh, that's one of the, you know, the rules that this little group has is you know, like no names. You know, don't tell anybody, you know, any details about yourself. Uh, you know, we're not supposed to, to know anything about each other. You know, in case they get caught, you know, they can't, you know, rat the other people out. Um, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, I did. Her, her character is a little bit more sympathetic than the rest of them. Um, just because uh, we do learn a little bit about them. I mean, this is one of those films that does spend a little bit of time uh, you know, letting us know a little bit more about who these people are than just having them be, you know, here's a group of criminals, they ran into a vampire, and now they got to deal with it. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't know that I particularly liked these people, uh, you know, I, but I did enjoy their performances and, and thought they were good, you know, as the characters that they were supposed to be. And again, I, I really did like uh, Melissa Barrera's character. Uh, like I said, she is uh, more sympathetic <laughs> than the rest of this bunch. Uh, but the star of the show for me was Alicia Weir as Abigail. Um, and I don't know um, exactly how old uh, she is in real life, but uh, I don't think she's much more than like 15 or 16 maybe. Uh, so I, I felt this was probably a fairly challenging role uh, because it is a little bit more than you might think, uh, you know, that it would be on the surface. You know, uh, you know, she's a, the, the star of the show. I mean, she really is. She's the, you know, I would say the main character of the film. Um, but uh, she's not just a 12 year old little girl. So, you know, you don't have a young actress, you know, playing a kid. You've got a young actress playing a kid who is actually a vampire uh, that is much older uh, than, you know, her body. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I thought that was, uh, you know, one of the challenges to the role was, you know, is she going to be able to pull off being, you know, a, a, a creature uh, that is much older than she appears? Uh, and I thought she did it very, very well. She's very convincing as a vampire. Um, you know, she she does have that cuteness about her, but at the same time, uh, when she's in full vampire mode, uh, she is a force to be reckoned with. And I thought she she did a really, really good job because, I mean, this isn't one of those, you know, Dracula style, you know, vampire movies. Um, this is like 30 days of night type vampire. She's mean, she's nasty, and she's going to kill these people. That is uh, what, you know, she is there to do. Um, but anyway, I did I did like her character. And, uh, and and thought that she carried this film quite well. Uh, another thing I liked about it was um, the special effects. I mean, this is a bloody film. Uh, it is, uh, well, some people might even go as far as to say it's pretty damn gory. I mean, yeah, it's uh, some pretty nasty stuff going on, uh, you know, throughout this film. So obviously I enjoyed that. Uh, that's the thing I like to see. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, just uh, overall, I mean, this is, uh, you know, everything that uh, I think I could ask, uh, you know, for a film of this type, um, because, it, you know, it's one of those films where, you know, you've seen everything in this film in, you know, other movies. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, a mashup of, you know, things that, you know, you've already seen before, um, but it puts it together very, very well. It's very well executed film. I mean, it looks good. It's got good special effects. I mean, it's got, you know, characters that, you know, that you're interested in, even if you don't particularly like most of them. Um, I mean, it just does things, you know, really well. Um, but it takes these things and puts them together. And at the same time, you know, it adds a little bit to the mix um, to make it, you know, feel like you know something that you just haven't seen a hundred times already um again you know you've got uh you know our our main character here um or at least one of the main characters i'd say melissa barrera's character is like you know they're kind of like co-leads um but abigail you know is a child vampire 
Now, you've seen, you know, kid vampires in other films. Uh, there was one in 30 Days of Night, right? In one of, you know, one of the shorter scenes there. Um, Salem's Lot had uh, child vampires, you know, running around Salem's Lot. Um, but I don't know that I've ever seen one before where the, the child vampire was the main character. So, I mean, it's the, the focus of the film. Uh, if there's another one out there that I've seen, I'm completely, you know, spacing out and not remembering it. Um, so that was another thing that, you know, they added to the mix, you know, to make this one feel, you know, a little different than, you know, what you've probably uh, seen before. Uh, so I really like that. Um, and it does, you know, other things too. Again, I'm not going into it as far as spoilers, um, but there's other little reveals that go along uh, to make this story a little bit more than, you know, hey, we got some people trapped uh, trying to get away from a vampire. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it does do, you know, little things, you know, to, to set itself apart, you know, even though it's not, you know, anything that is completely unique, just the whole package together makes it feel, you know, like it's a fresh little horror film. And uh, that's uh, what it is. And, and, and I really liked it. So uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot more than I could say about it uh, without going into to, too many uh, spoilers, uh, more more spoilers than I've already done. Um yeah, uh, well, one thing that I will say is uh, this is another one of those films where I was pulling for the villain. Again, I didn't really particularly like any of these criminals. I mean, you know, hey, they were kidnapping a kid uh, to hold for ransom. I mean, that's a piece of shit move. I mean, and then this is one of those films where they fucked around and they found out. Uh, so, yes, I was pulling for Abigail throughout this whole film. So it's another thing I don't normally do. I mean, sometimes in slasher films I do, uh, especially some of the later, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. It's like you don't like the characters, so you just want to see them die. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is one of those films, too. So I was definitely pulling for Abigail. And, and how it ended up for her, well, you'll just have to watch the film and find out. Um, I don't think I have anything really negative uh, to say about the film. Um, yeah, I, I just had a great time with it. Uh, it's a film I definitely see myself watching at least a few more times. I mean, it may not go into the, you know, the annual uh, one to two year rotation of films that I like to watch every, you know, year or two years uh, just to keep coming back to them. But, uh, but it's definitely a great time and absolutely worth the watch. So if you haven't seen Abigail, I highly recommend it. If you have seen it, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. And if uh, before you, well, if you haven't subscribed to Neon Black Reviews, do that. Click that subscribe button, hit that bell, turn on those notifications so you don't miss a review. And smash that thumbs up for me, guys. Uh, that like does help the video out here on YouTube, and I appreciate you doing that for me. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.